Hey guys, welcome back to the world base building video. I'm Will, a builder here at World Base Building, and today I'm going to be doing a live build for you guys. Today, I'm going to be building a double rage box base. Double rage boxes are something you see all throughout Clash of Clans, from Legends to CWL to even just regular Clan Wars. There's something that you can see everywhere. Now, double rage boxes typically have a few common design styles, either with two rage comps either in the scatter and multis kind of on the sides of the base or you might find a town hall rage comp consisting of like a multi with a back end rage comp that's stacked pretty heavily with dps now box bases i think are a good way to get started into building in clash of clans if you're interested so that's why i'm gonna be building this today and also do some general tips for you guys and go ahead and follow along so when starting a box base i always like to start with the town hall comp and what I think makes a good Town Hall comp is something that is hard to sui your heroes and also hard to queen charge either with hard wall break pathing or with uh, the way you orient your buildings just to make things a little bit more difficult. With the current um, Town Hall 16 meta and the epic equipments that are now in the game, it makes uh, queen charge and sui very easy for the attacker um, and you can't stop it every time but we're going to try to employ some techniques here in order to do that so starting out with the town hall comp i oh i'm gonna start with the mono by the time that behind the town hall here as a teaser mono is good in some scenarios which means in front of the town hall or behind in the back of the base you also see the mono sometimes too so let's get started here um i'm gonna go ahead and start with some walls here around this town hall comp uh i'm gonna do a five tile gap from the sides of the town hall and the reason i'm doing that here is for sarge reachability um, this is just a typical thing that some builders do here is if you have a 3x3 building here with a two tile gap that um, on the other side of this wall here Sarge will not be able to reach it So if any Sarge land in this area, you will have to clone over the wall in order to reach the town hall and the monolith That's just one technique and it can be employed throughout the rest of the base So let's get started here. We have our mono down so I think on this base, I'm going to just place a multi here. We're probably going to design ourselves a multi comp in front of the town hall or a single. Uh, and also, typically, you do see some expos. People use those a little bit more for DPS here. I'm probably going to end up moving those in the future, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the bomb towers here as well. Um, I'm actually going to make those symmetrical here and add an extra wall next to the monolith just to um, fill in that empty space. So now we kind of have a general layout here for our town hall comp. I'm going to just start building off of it and we're going to come back to it as needed or as I see other ideas. So let's go ahead and put the CC down here if I can find it. Okay, let's go ahead and put it behind the monolith. I think I'm going to move that at some point, but we'll go from there. Um, all right, next step from here, you can either start building the back end of the base or what I like to do is start kind of building off to the sides of the scatter comps. Um, so first thing I want to do is just to get a, a reference of where I'm building, I'm going to make sure that the monolith is going to be unreachable from the other side of the clan castle. So one way I can do that is building out three corners from the edge of the building and going kind of like a diagonal like this. So you can do that on each side here. Make sure you move that extra tile just, just for that symmetry and build out here. Also filled in on both of the corners. So this makes it so that if the queen is on the outside of any of these walls, he, she will not be able to reach the town hall unless she breaks a wall. Um, that is also subject to change. Quick disclaimer, every builder has their own techniques and ideas. So you might see builders doing something else, but these are just some things that I typically do while building a base. So next up, we're going to start with our multis here. And we're going to be having a rage comp on either side of them. Um, I'm just putting that there for reference. So we don't want to have the multis too wide out, but we also don't want to have them too close together for easy pathing between them. So I'm going to start, I think I'm going to start them here about one tile in and let's, uh, we'll try out the rage towers like that and see how we feel building off of them. I'm going to move the town hall comp a little bit closer this way, as well as adding a wall here in front of that multi in front of tower. Some people see multis in front of the town hall and they're like, hey, why why do you place a multi there? It's free. It's If you have a king or a queen, it's going to easily take that multi. But typically, a multi in front of the town hall is for Lalo. Lalo is a very strong army. Um, and you can change it to a single, which I might end up doing to defend the Sui. But 
some skilled players do use Lalo, and having a multate in front of there can make it a little bit harder to Lalo the Town Hall. Alright, moving on. So, let's get started on these two Rage Comps here. We have our two Multis in the core, we have our two Rage Towers down, what's next? Alright, let's start putting more defenses in those Rage Comps. Um, one thing that you do have to watch out for while having a Rage Comp is giving too much value but also worrying about not having enough value because you're using a Rage Comp. There's a good balance there, and depending on what you do can make it very difficult or easy for the attacker. So some examples of a bad Rage Comp that you might see in a one-hit format, so CWL or War, is if you have Rage Comps very stacked like this. You have so much value so close together, um, a strategy like a Super Archer Blimp, or a Zap, Zap's very common right now with Root Riders or Lalo, can easily target all these buildings. In Legends, you do sometimes see stacked defenses like this, um, and they are vulnerable to Zap attacks still, but it is very tricky for an attacker who does not have an army capable of dealing with that easily. So, let's, go started. let's get started here. I'm going to build this mainly probably for CWL or War. You might be able to use it in Legends and have some success, but we'll see. Uh, I'm going to put this scatter diagonally from this Rage Tower. I found that on the corners, um, I think a 3x3 three by th three by three building works good there. So, hmm, let's see what else we want to do with this. Let's add our Rico, Rico Cannons. Rico Cannons at Tunnel 16, I think, are my favorite defense. They have some of the most DPS of any defense, and they're very good against stopping heroes or any attack in general. So, all right. We'll have to fiddle around with this Rage Comp a little bit to see what I like. Uh, I'm also going to put an Expo down here. These are a little bit split, so we do have to worry about a Flame Flinger onto the Scatter Shot, but we'll have... I think I'm going to put the Air Hero down to deal with that. Uh, one thing to take a note, Air Heroes, your Archer Queen and your RC, they have different lengths of their radius. So if you notice, Archer Queen can kind of touch the edge of the layout here, but the RC has about one tile less gap here. So, if I had the Archer Queen up against the Scatter Shot, like, the, like so, a Flame Flinger would not be able to be placed on this direction without fighting the Archer Queen. But, if I had the RC here, a Scatter Shot would be able to be in this area and target the Scatter Shot without being hit by the RC, and that's because of her reduced range. That is just something to take account of, so because of that, I'm going to be staggering the RC one tile out to deal with that, and also having this expo on this side. Um, I'm going to be a little bit goofy with this rage comp. A little bit different from maybe a typical uh, scatter comp that you might see. Um, and that's because the King Gauntlet is very strong right now. He can splash through walls, do splash damage in a big area, get a lot of value from a rage comp. So I'm going to try to make him... I'm trying to make the attacker have a harder time with his king getting all of this value. Um, also, this expo here will be able to hop, help against General Flame Flinger, but we also are going to have to watch out on this backside over here, where we will eventually have our Eagle, which because we already have these two expos up here. So, why don't... I'm actually going to remove these expos here. We're going to do something a little bit different with the Town Hall comp. Uh, I want to try something a little bit with the Rico Cannons a little bit more in the core, like so. Uh... And I think I'm gonna... I saw a base concept that kind of employed uh, some expos like that. And so I'm gonna try that out. Um, one thing you can do is if you're trying to get into base building, is take a look and see what other people do. You can look at the base and be like, oh, I like, I like what they did with that Rage Comp, but I think this Town Hall Comp should be different. So maybe you build your own Town Hall Comp and you like this certain little tiny compartment. You can build that little tiny compartment, but build the rest of the base yourself, or have a general idea of a style. That is what some people do, is taking inspiration from another base. Some You might see some similarities between bases. Um, that could be one of the reasons why. So let's start our expos like that. Uh, make sure we're mirroring our Rage Comp over here. I'm going to be doing a symmetrical style base, which is something you'll typically see. Uh, if I say something is asym, that means it's asymmetrical, which means it's different on different sides. Um, which some bases are asymmetrical, and they do do good in their own scenarios. So we're going to be placing the expo like this. Make sure we place our archer queen on this side. Now we kind of have a rough layout of our rage comps. This is a general thing. 
Um, some things that stick out to me is you have your Expos here, um, which will help against the Flame Flinger from this kind of backside of the base over here. You have your air, air Heroes to stop this corner Flame Flinger, and you also have Expos here for more DPS and etc. All right, we'll come back to the Town Hall comp here, see what we want to get done with that. So let's start putting down some walls here to help out our defenses to make them unreachable. A big thing is the Archer Queen. You have to watch out for the things that she can reach from certain compartments, especially from Root Rider Spam. We're seeing that very common even after the nerf, which 600 HP, that's only like a 7% HP nerf. Not a very big nerf to new Root Riders. Nobody's surprised to see them still doing very well in all formats. So one thing we got to do is try to limit the access the Queen can reach from all those compartments the Root Riders are letting her into. So let's get started. First off, let's start making our multis unreachable here. So let's put a wall here. Actually, we're gonna move this expo. We're gonna we're gonna delete this expo for now, but we're gonna make this multi unreachable. So we're gonna build out three tiles from the corner and go like that. Uh, we're gonna do that on both sides here. All right, there we go. So now we kind of have a general wall there for our multis. Uh, Archer Queen cannot reach them if she's on this side of the wall here. Um, and let's start filling in here as well. We're going to just fill this central channel there. Um, from the scatter, we'll build out on the other side of this rage comp. And make sure that he is also on the scatter shot is also unreachable. We'll build that. I we think we're going to have to tweak some of these. Don't think I'll be able to do the rage comp I wanted with the walls that I'm doing. So we will have to tweak with that a little bit. So gonna build out here um, no exact reason to why I'm building the walls like that but it is a um, unreachable for the scatter here and also just looks a little bit nicer there on the edge of the rage comps okay so now we do have a little bit of room here in the multi comp to put I think I'm gonna put the Rico cannons back in there and I'm gonna be able to put that expo that I was talking about over here in the rage can I Hmm, doesn't look like it at the moment without changing the wall structure. Uh, I could maybe, let's see, could maybe put the scatter shot like that, which would allow me to move the wall here, which would make the scatter shot unreachable from this side of the wall from the queen, which in turn would allow me to fit this expo here that I was talking about. Actually, you know what might work even better? Switching this expo and scatter shot. I kind of like that actually. Sorry, rage comps are something that you do have to tweak and kind of adjust as you build. Um, so. There we go. Now we're looking a little bit more symmetrical. And now you're seeing your rage comp in a typical spot. <sighs> Alright, let's keep building here. I'm going to make a dead zone. Hmm. I guess I'm just going to have to build a straight line like that. We're just getting... Ooh, I don't like that. Okay. Alright, we're just going to close that off here for now. See how that goes. Uh, the reason I was hesitant there for a second is I didn't really want to have this wall, these walls up against these scatter shot and multi like that. And I'll come back to that in a minute on to why I did not want to do that. But let's see. Keep building. Wow. Okay. You know what? We're going to be a little bit different and we're going to put our scatter shots back where I had them like so. Um, these are a little bit more goofy of a spot. As you might say, they're kind of more on this back end of the base over here. So let's see what else we can get done here. Uh, I'm going to add a wall in these multi dead zones. Most likely we will come back to that. But that allows us to make this at least not wall breakable immediately when charging a side comp. And we'll build out these six side scatter comps. We'll have two tiles gap there. Oh. Hmm. 
we could do something and make the scatter shots reachable from this expo comp which I think I'm going to do alright so one thing we'll see if I can build these expo comps like this okay we're gonna try to build off this here reason I just built this expo in this compartment like this is so that the expo is unreachable from the outside of this wall making it harder to walk with your queen um, we might do something like this. All right. Now we're having a very, a very boxy side of the base here. Kind of funny since we're building a box base. So let's continue this and see how we can turn it out. All right. Always opening the corner there of those expo compartments. The reason you want to do that is just to make pathing a little bit more awkward for attackers. Um, we'll be adding our little side compartments, or side walls here, to the side of the town hall comp. The reason you have these walls, number of reasons. Um, it's for wall break pathing mainly, from my understanding. Uh, if you have a queen in this area, and you are charging one of these side areas here, your wall breaks are going to either target here immediately, which you can either force that or not force that, and they'll either target this they'll probably if you place a wall break here with these walls here it'll target this scatter wall right here is which is which what i'm going for sorry that is what i'm going for because a lot of town hall comps like i'm building here haven't finished it yet but if you're able to get your queen from this direction over here and charge her into the side of the base she'll be able to get the town hall mono fight the cc and potentially get value from this multi and whatever else is over here uh, that is a common crack to box bases and something you can prevent by building a good side compartments. Um, reason I'm building these little kind of three by three with a hole in the middle walls is just to um, make wall breaking a little bit harder and just more aesthetic as well. Um, one of my friends, his, his name is Mir, he's a builder here at Old Base Building as well. All the time he likes to talk to me about good building aesthetic and making things look nice as well so i try to embrace that sometimes but a lot of the time you kind of want to build for um results which i think you can do both so anyway moving forward here let's keep working on our scatter comps uh we need to make them unreachable from the outside so um making sure we do that is it's four tiles and then a wall so that the queen cannot reach that you might see me just doing that offhand and that's because i already remember like the distance of things but um in case you are curious to see if something is reachable from outside of a wall one technique that i used to use a lot is the skeleton trap trick if you place a skeleton trap on actually wait i think that doesn't okay maybe that doesn't work anymore there used to be a trick where you could use skeleton traps um to see what they targeted. If anything inside that radius was touching, a queen could reach that building. Um, actually, it is a good... I realize that scatter wall is actually one wall farther. So, if I go back here, I noticed that nothing is... The radius is not touching the scatter here. But if I was one tile in, it's touching the side of that scatter comp, which means it'd be reachable. So, you can use that skeleton trap trick. Sorry about the... Uh, misinformation there for a second i realized my wall was a little bit farther out than i realized but i'm gonna push that wall back out because i like having that two tile gap in between buildings that allows you to place traps such as giant bombs and also eliminate um, different chain value from different troops such as e-dragons as well you can have some different effects of the king gauntlet so um, i'll leave it two tiles out for now also keep in mind the scatter shot is reachable from this expo we could do something a little bit goofy and one, two, three, build out, build out. And we could do something like that, uh, making the expo, uh, making an archer queen have to walk into this expo right here, which she might be in range of that. Um, I think I'll, I think I'll run with that. I kind of like that actually. Um, we'll see how that goes. So let's just, uh, tidy up the other side of the base here, keeping it a little bit symmetrical making sure we finish it up over there okay now we kind of have a rough layout of our of our 
rage comps, what else can we do? We still have to place our eagle artillery. We have this inferno at the front that we haven't really done anything with that we need to keep and maybe place somewhere else. We also have our multi-archer towers, which are very strong defense right now as well all of the combo buildings at tunnel 16 are very important as they do more splash damage and multi-target abilities different troops multi-archer towers are good against lalo and root riders honestly they don't do as much damage to a queen um because they only shoot one bullet at the queen but for general attacks i think the combo archer the combo buildings in general are important to take care of so we do have this rage tower here we have an area to put some rage value in so we could put a ground bow there thinking about that uh one thing to keep in mind here um our zap value that we are giving up for this base is a multi and a ricochet cannon as well as a spell tower that is enough value for a player that uses zap lalo so that's something to keep in mind that is a Good amount of zap value it's not crazy we want to make sure they don't get anything else in there but you're not able to zap this expo scatter if we do put this expo here um you will be able to zap spell tower expo scatter shot um but this is kind of going to be the default zap here is this inferno tower rikigo spell tower so going off that building the base taking count later that this one entry you might want to target is someone zapping this multi Rico and spell tower. All right, let's continue. Just that was a quick little thing about zap value. Uh, not completely sure how I want to finish up the scatter shot comps here, but we'll just build out these walls here to make the scatter shot unreachable from here. And we're going to get started on the Eagle artillery compartment. Um, can't really push the base any farther to the side, but I am going to open these corner walls here. Um, could do something like making this a dead zone one interesting fact about super wall breakers if you did not know is that when they target a wall they will target a wall with a building behind it first um, if there is no other targets it will target the wall in front of it there are some caveats and special things the builders do more than that but that's kind of the general principle so in this scenario here uh, if we had a super wall breaker placed on any side up here on the top side of this base, it would not target this wall or this wall. It would most likely target this Rico cannon wall or if I place walls here. Um, so we can make a dead zone there potentially, but I'll probably end up putting a building in there. We are looking a little bit goofy on the back end. So not completely sure what I want to do back here yet. We also have the ability to put a building like here in the rage not not going to put anything important there probably because of zap value all right let's just place this eagle artillery and see what we can get done with it hmm okay don't really like where this eagle artillery is going is there anything i can do to the scatter shot compartments to change them a little bit I could push the multis out. I could push the whole sides of the base out one tile. That's kind of a lot of work. Um, but it's something that I might do, actually. All right. I'm going to pause the video real quick. I'm going to jump cut, and I'm going to fix the base. I'm going to spread it out just a little bit so that we have a little bit more space inside the core to do a little bit more building. So, welcome back. I just did a little bit of editing to the base. As you can see, I spread out the multi-inferno towers one tile. That, in turn... Uh, move the rage comps out a little bit more. Give me a little bit more space for this eagle artillery compartment. Um, all right. One also thing. One reason I wanted to do that is I wanted to move this clan castle more into the core. Now, there's a reason I wanted to do this. The where you put your CC is important to what you are wanting to defend. Root riders are a very big problem right now, and triple ice golem seems to be the runaway favorite for all sorts of armies right now, as it is a stall CC and can hold your troops either um, in a core DPS area or just slow down the troops in general, maybe forcing a time fail. So I'm going to put this CC here, and that will allow me to um, play with this core area a little bit more and also activate the CC so if you have any spamming troops from here the CC will get pulled freezing them and then they'll have these raised Rico cannons to deal with which could be a problem for the attacker all right so now that we have our eagle artillery down we have a little bit more space here um, we're gonna back that up a little bit 
And we're going to... Oh, forgot to place these walls back. Uh, sorry if you were wondering about that. We're going to place those back. I uh, still have similar compartments to before I edited the base. Um, here we go. Eagle comp. I am almost out of walls. I have 11 left. So we're going to see where we potentially pull some walls from. We do have um, those walls we just put there. All right. Now we're going to look and see where can I pull some walls from. So uh, I can pull a couple walls from here. If I want to, I could remove these walls here, which I will most likely do. Um, come back to that, potentially. Uh, what do I want to do with these scatter comps? I think I will build out from this corner here and do this a little bit differently, like so. Um, this will make a little bit weird of a backside of a base, but we'll make a dead zone that is untargetable by wall breakers. Um, and scatters are unreachable from that eagle side. Also, it'll make the pathing a little bit more wonky for troops, so something to take into account as well. Um, so, for this eagle comp, what can I do? Some things that I am currently thinking about. Um, also got to put the air heroes back to where I said I would put them at we do have these two ground bows uh, we can put them somewhere so I'm thinking about doing that either in I'll do that in the eagle compartment they're not going to be raged unfortunately hmm can I can I rage them anywhere I can put them at hmm I guess maybe not hmm Maybe we'll just put the ground bows here for now. I don't like that, actually. One bit. Okay. One thing we also have to keep in mind is we do have to place our air sweeper still. Gonna come back to that. I'll place a builder hut there on the core just for that uh, dead zone space. Alright, where can we make up some walls? Uh, I can fix this, and I can also remove that. Uh, did not mean to move the town hall there. So let's try to clean up these walls a little bit. See if we can salvage a few. Um, can remove these two walls as well. Okay. So that did make wall breaking a little bit easier there. But I did want those walls back. So I kind of want to stick with this. Making that scatter shot unreachable from that little corner. Um, I am thinking about putting the Rico cannons here, actually, which I think would do better. If I put if I put the ground bows here, which I kind of like that. Rage ground bows in the core, like yay. All right, what would that do for us? Just move that wall there so it's kind of even. What would this do for us? Once again, the rage value is still um, Rico, multi-rage tower, or expo. Can you get... I do not think you can get the Rico and the expo multi, so we're going to leave it like that. Could be wrong on that, but pretty sure you cannot. One thing I will have to keep in mind, though, someone could zap this Rico Expo Rage Tower and fling her the scatter shot from this side. Um, not really going to worry about, though, because defending a flinger from a zap entry is a little bit harder. Uh, okay, so now we got our raged. We kind of have a nice raged back end here. Very strong. Um, going to do a lot of damage if the attacker is not careful and prepared for that. So what can we do this to this eagle comp to make it better here? We have our multi-archer towers, which I will prematurely place down here. I think those are good. It gives us some splash over the top of the eagle artillery overlap. It also gives us some overlap onto the scatter shots. That can be good for balloon pathing. And also gives us just some more damage on the back side of this base here. Um, as always, for a box base, is base by base dependent, as of course. But uh, you will see typically a Barbarian King and a Grand Warden on the back side of the base here in the Eagle Comp. One thing we do have to watch out for 
is a flame flinger from this side of the base here because the warden does not outrange a flame flinger you can flame flinger this as well as the multi archer tower and the eagle so we will have to watch out for that and potentially place mortars um which seems like it will be the case so let's leave this here we have spent a lot of time on these scatter comps we're going to come back now to the town hall comp which is something i have kind of left a little bit prematurely there's not much going on there so what can i do for this town hall comp all right so i'm going to build a little bit of a buffer wall here i'm going to see if i can pull some more walls uh we might have to leave it like that but what this will do that's not going to get that job done Huh. Ooh, you know what we could do? Because I don't have any expos or any other DPS things going into this town hall comp, we could make these miniature like little side walls off this. You'll see what I mean here in a sec. We could do something like this. Hmm, I haven't done this in a while. Alright, uh, we'll move those bomb towers in like this. We are giving up that little Sarch entry there to the side, um, but something we will worry about with our traps. Okay, we just narrowed the town hall comp a little bit. <sighs> I'm actually surprised. Okay, we'll add a couple walls here just for dead zone. Um, dead zones are, uh, I previously mentioned them in the video, but... Uh, kind of empty space that makes things harder to path and the reason I'm doing this one is just for the barbarian king here um, uh, This wall are easy for the queen to get into the town hall comp But will make it hard for the barbarian king to path into there one thing we can do is place storages on either side of this multi multi inferno tower I'm going to change it to a single I Think I should change it to a single We're gonna change it to a single um, it'll help a little bit with a Sui. Um, depending on the other defenses we put around it, we could change it to a multi. Uh, yeah, moving forward, we do have this open space now in our Rico Cannon compartments. Hmm, what do I want to do with that? Alright, maybe I'll do something a little bit goofy with this. And I'll put four storages there. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to go back to the walls that I had with a little bit of a change because I think they will be better. Um, as what I was trying to envision is not going to work on this base. Put them back a little bit one tile out as well as fix those corners. Um, there we are. Okay. We're going to spread those gold storages out here. Purpose of that is, uh, let's see... If uh, if this is the king, king would target here and then here, um, and then I guess he would go to the town hall. We'll play with that pathing a little bit and see how it goes. All right, that town hall comp a little bit free, but box bases typically you either have a very stacked town hall comp or it's a little bit more free with a couple little techniques just to stop a few things. All right, so we still have our air sweepers. The two best places that I see where we can put them just off the bat are going to be behind these multi inferno towers. I think I'm actually going to spread them a little bit farther apart and make room for them like so and put them directly behind the multis facing towards the eagle. What this will do, this will help stop any air spam, mainly from things like dragons, or it'll also help for long blimps and a little bit of lalo um, with the sweepers behind the multis balloons will get pushed away from the, the the multis making it a little bit harder on the attacker now you can freeze the multi and the sweeper which is something um, you can get a little bit nitpicky on and, and not have that in other bases uh, but we're just gonna leave that for now I think we're gonna have to make this whole central compartment open uh, also, one thing to take into mind here, I might actually have to change that, these sweepers. Um, if I do have the sweepers here, uh, as you can see, we kind of have this whole path 
of defenses through the core, which easily pass into this monolith. Um, and the problem with that, normally it's not a problem, but because root riders exist, um, people can spam root riders and then get all the way to the town hall through this. So one way we can mitigate that a little bit, not not perfect, but we can help stop it. Um, I'll have to find another place for these sweepers is if we have a lack of defensive buildings in this area so that everything paths away from this monolith, kind of leaving it as an isolated thing, which is able to damage the attacking armies. So what can we do for that? I can put this just default trash building in the middle there to stop that, or I can move the CC back there. So where can we put these sweepers? We can put them behind the ricochet cannons. That's one place. They're a little bit far back. Um, is there any ability for me to... Let's check the reach ability again of this monolith. I wanted to see if I could fit it in here directly behind the multis. And I could do it on this other side over here. Like so. But we're not going to do that. So what are some solutions to this? We can put them behind this. They're a little bit wider. Which has its... Hmm. I think we're going to put them there. We'll just put them there for now. They're a little bit wide. I don't really like how wide they are, but I don't really have any... I don't really have any places. Okay, we're going to move these bomb towers as well. I just found a good spot I think they'd be good at is right here next to these <laughs> scatter comps. Hogs are a little bit more prevalent. This makes it a little bit harder for them. And also, if you do sarch the side of this town hall, which is like from this angle, I had them here to stop that. Um, I can stop an uh, angle blimp from here, um, but uh, if anyone comes in from the front side of the town hall, there's nothing I can really do to stop that on this base, um, so I can move the bomb towers. Uh, okay, so because I move those bomb towers, I can move the monolith one tile backwards. Okay, yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll move the monolith one tile backwards. And we'll make some room here for these sweepers behind the multis. Okay. So now if we can find two walls so we can block off that. Um, just to make a little bit weirder pathing. Where can I steal two walls from? Anywhere? Anywhere I can steal two walls from. I'll move this like here. Just for... Alright, looks like... Looks like these scatter comp walls have to go. Unfortunately, their time is due. Okay, place two walls here. That just makes a little bit of a buffer for wall breaks. Wall breaks will target here or here instead of... Right, wait, no, that doesn't... Actually, it doesn't matter. Um, so what I was talking about there is if someone queen charges this, gets their queen into core, um, if you they can wall break her into here, which will allow her access to these multis in the core which could be a problem uh, but that is something we will try to address now for these two gold storages I figured out what I want to do we're gonna put two low durability buildings in there um, and which buildings do I want to pick for that mm, we'll do we'll just do these two dark storages and by I mean low durability they have less durability than these gold storages um, so if the king walks up and hits this gold storage, it'll destroy this dark elixir drill as well as the gold storage um, when it hits and it'll path into the single here. It'll do similar when it hits this one, meaning that you cannot by itself send the king from the side and he'll walk in here. There might be a couple ways you can do that, um, but we'll add an extra wall here on the sides and now we have two other walls which I will throw on the sides of this eagle comp. Not really happy with this eagle comp, but it is kind of how it has turned out. We do force wall breaks onto this wall in front of the expo here, so we can do some things to stop that. Um, I am thinking about putting these multi-archer towers 
a little bit closer in like so which I think that will work there's enough room for traps there which allows us to fit mortars we're gonna put the multi-mortar on this side uh, I would recommend the side that you want to defend the flinger the most put the multi-mortar because it does a little bit more damage to a flame flinger the reason I'm putting it here is because you have the warden altar as well as the multi archer tower and eagle which are vulnerable to the um, mortar there now you are still vulnerable to a flame flinger here, but you're making it a little bit more tricky for the attacker. Um, we'll recess it one tile, which um, unfortunately, if this does get targeted by a flame flinger, it will splash damage this as well. But um, I'm willing to take that risk. We do have two other mortars that we need to place, and I'm thinking about placing this one here. So maybe in. Okay, a couple places I could put them. Town Hall side. I could put them in front of the single here. So I could put them like there. Um, which I'm not going to do. I could put them next to the single. Uh, so I could do them like here. But um, one thing to know is with the Builder Hut level, if you have at least three Builder Huts touching the Town Hall, um, and I'm gonna move these that's fine like that if we provide a defense here um, they won't path into that um, with four builder huts on this town hall here it'll be pretty much impossible to flinger the town hall by itself without um, help by you know any other attacking things okay so what do we have left we have a few defenses and our trash and our traps traps are going to be important on this base uh so let's see what else we have to do okay two mortars so uh prematurely we're just gonna put the mortars here uh because i want to put these air defenses here these air defenses are in a weird spot and i'm gonna place them one tile in i can't do it on that side but it'll be okay I'm going to place them one tile in. Reasoning for that is I'm going to put a storage in front of them. And that means two tile gap. They cannot be chainable by E-drags. Uh, which air defense, E-drags, you know, air, air troop. Want to defend those. So I would like to try to... One tip I have for you is when you place your air defenses, try to mitigate the chain value as much as you can. Usually air defenses are on the outsides of the base. Uh to limit hound pathing which is what i'll get into when i place traps all right so i'm gonna have to move these mortars at some point we could just put them here as our like buffer defenses which i will touch on as well all right so we have our air, two air defenses on the back side then we're gonna have our two air defenses on the front here uh these you kind of see typical air defense placement because you're stopping hounds and you're also you're forcing hound pathing um which is for some Sarge entries if people use a, a Hound in front of a Blimp, or for Lalo. So, uh, I would like to touch on Hound Pathing now as I'm placing the Air Defenses. So, one tip that you can do for your Air Defenses is to not let the Hound path behind the Town Hall. So, as you can see here, if there's a uh, Lava Hound on this Air Defense and this one gets destroyed, it'll path across in front of the Town Hall. A lot of the time, people put red bombs behind the town hall for either Lalo or for a long balloon blimp. A few different armies, the red bombs are there to stop it, certain things. Um, if the hound crosses in front, usually it's an eternal tome, so it's invincible, it'll pull all of the traps. So by having the air defenses on the outsides of the base, you're not having any hounds easily path through the core of the base, pulling either black air mines or red air mines. Or so Sam's and Rab's respectively, seeking air mines, red air bombs. Um, people use ac builders use acronyms. You might hear me saying a few of those. All right, air defenses are down. So one thing I will also do is place a random trash building behind the air defense. Reason I'm doing this: if anybody decides to blimp from the side of the base, you cannot get direct balloon pathing here. Meaning I can put two seeking air mines to stop the blimp, or at least the attack attacker knows there could be them there preventing them from doing that entry all right moving on here we go we have more storages to put in front of this single uh we're gonna do two like yay 
uh, and then we're also going to put wizard towers in front. So, reason I'm doing this, uh, wizard towers have a lot of HP for a defensive building, so if you need more HP somewhere and a defense, you can use them. Um, but they also, that's kind of the main reason I'm using them. There's more uh, HP buildings in front of the single, making you making the attacker spend a little bit more time to defend it. Or, uh, sorry, spending a little bit more time to attack the single Inferno Tower. Also, having two split defenses in front of a either multi or a single in front of the town hall, or any defense for that matter, if anybody places a short uh, blimp going this direction, the balloons that they will place in front of it will split, allowing the builder to put seeking air mines here, stopping that blimp. Um, you might have had some previous experiences of that happening or seeing it happen. It is by design. Uh, Alright, what else do we have? We have three wizard towers. Okay, so let us see. I'm not going to put any more defenses in front of the scatter, but we will put a wizard tower in front of each side. Um, the reason for that is, if I have a wizard tower in front of the scatter directly... Um, if I have no defenses in front of my key areas that I'm trying to defend, uh, you can easily path balloons, any defensive targeting things straight into the scatter shot. So, uh, if I place a bunch of balloons up here, they will path immediately to this wizard tower and then immediately into the scatter. But if I'm if I place the wizard tower here and I put something such as a storage, I'm gonna touch on that in a sec. Um, the balloons will go from the wizard tower to the archer, t or sorry, wizard tower to air defense to scatter, out allowing a little bit more time. Scatter gets a few more shots, little bit harder. Um, that's just one kind of pathing technique. Uh, one thing that I recently learned from another builder is for compartments that are like this, with sharing a wall. If you put each building on the side two tiles away from that wall, you cannot wall break the middle of it because of these like miniature dead zones. Really weird wall breaking concept. Uh, if anyone is interested in a more in depth video, long format on very many wall breaking concepts for defending super wall breaks, say that in the comments. I'll, I'm open to making one of those. Also any other video ideas, let me know in the comments. Gonna be planning on making some more videos in the future. All right, so I'm gonna pull these air defenses in one tile just to uh, fill in that dead zone here. Do it on both sides. Uh, what did I... Okay, move that storage back here. Alright, there we go. So what do we want to do in this expo compartment? Also, one reason I did this expo compartment like this is so that the queen cannot reach the expo from the outside, making it not walkable. Difference between a queen charge and a, a queen walk is queen walks around the base versus queen goes inside the base. If, if a builder says something is walkable, it means it is reachable from the outside of the base or easily, easily accessible. Okay. So we kind of have our main footprint down where you have a little bit of trash left. Okay. What can I do? I'm going to place a cannon over here. Reason I'm doing that is another defense in front of the air defense so you can get you cannot get direct balloon or rocket loon pathing in front of it um and since this is an air defense i'll put a cannon here since it's a ground thing we'll just put those there prematurely i like to kind of pace out where i put my defenses at we will do two archer towers in this general vicinity and then we'll do the other two like here and then uh reason i'm doing this is another defense in front of these air defenses and a typical advice from me is if you are building a base try to minimize the amount of buildings that you can destroy for free i.e if i have this army camp in the corner and i have a archer tower way way over here and you can just place a wizard a barbarian an archer anything to destroy that get a few percentage if i have this archer tower here it, it's hard for you to get that free cleanup uh, either slowing down the base or just making it a little bit harder that's a if you can do that it's a little bit harder now because of the combination defenses to have that full coverage of the base um okay sorry moving forward uh we're gonna fill in our uh dead zone or our space in front of these uh air defenses i can either 
I'll just do the army camp there. Another tip is try to fill as much as the base as you can. Um, if you can't do that, it's okay. It happens. Like, I can't pull this tile out without changing things a lot. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, there we are. <sighs> okay, archer tower's there. Two tiles away, so they're not chainable. We'll start putting in our trash buildings we'll have that air defense there at that corner um, like I said I wanted a two tile gap for that building do it on both sides um, and then I'll just put another trash building in front of that expo just don't want to put another defense in there so we have two defenses left a wizard tower and a cannon two things that have a odd or a yes an odd number of defenses and I'm going to end up putting those on the eagle side just as another buffer defense. What I mean by that is just you have to destroy it to get farther into the base. So for spam um, and also just to make things like hog pathing and balloon pathing a little bit harder. Uh, so we're going to put them about yay. That's probably fine. Um, and we still have these cannons here, which... I'll end up bringing in about a tile. If I can slide this stuff over a little bit, that allows me to place a building here on the corner. Um, yes. Had it like, yeah. Okay, making sure I have this symmetrical on both sides. All right. Putting just a building there to fill up the space. Uh, we do have this annoying building called the workshop I'm just gonna put that down with another building there uh, then there are some techniques you can do for placing your trash buildings but um, generally here I'm just gonna do a general fill a couple things you can do is in front of the scatter comps leaving two tile gaps unless you're trying to force a certain pathing that allows you for a potential Tesla farm to be in there to to it's just another thing as you can do um, for attackers might worry about that as well put another trash building there next to the archer tower um, Did I do yeah, I did do a uh, Another very small tip which probably doesn't matter that much But try to mix up the regular buildings versus resource buildings that you place down So if I have all elixir collectors on the side of a base you can use sneaky goblins to funnel all of that but um, if you have like elixir collector, barracks, spell factory, elixir collector, gold mine, like a mixture of buildings, the attacker has to use different troops besides sneakies to funnel all of it. Another, another tip there. Okay, I'm running out of trash buildings, which that's a good problem to have sometimes because it means you can space out the trash buildings more. Alright, so what can we do? We have about five, so we can put a building there filling that gap um, we'll fill that gap as well there all right and then we'll fill this one here we have another another space for that so we can steal this space from or this building from up here and place it right here and then we're gonna need about two more buildings for this left corner so what can we do for that um, one thing we can do is remove this um, and we're going to slide all of these over one tile and move that one closer. That allows us to get another building there. Um, I guess we'll do that on that side too because we can remove a building. Let's see if we can do some magic here. Slide that in one tile and then get ourselves our last building to fill in the gap. Which... We can fill it in if we... All right, there we go. So we have our base filled in. Last thing that we have to do is traps. Now, traps, uh, some builders might argue are the most important of the base. And you can make or break a defense with your traps. You can bait certain players, certain entries, um, and they're very important. Uh, you as a player, you might have encouraged... You might have had a scenario happen where traps literally stopped you from tripling a base and this is where they come into play i'll give you a quick interview or a quick overview of each thing and i'll place them 
uh, tell you different ways they can be used, and that'll be the base uh, live build. All right, Tesla farm. Multiple different places you can place a Tesla farm, or Teslas in general. You can have Teslas in front of the town hall, surrounding this, making it a little bit more harder, more defenses around that single. All right, other places you can place it at. In front of the Eagle, stop. So if I placed a bunch of Teslas here, um, that is one place you can do that as well, and use uh, you can use that to stop balloons and then trap blimps. Um, what I am probably going to use it for, um, I think I'm just going to use it in front of the town hall. That's one of the most generic ways you can do it. I'll just do a small Tesla farm there. I'll do two skeleton traps just to make it a little bit harder for troops there. Um, not putting a lot of thought into that. Kind of just trying to place a few things down. Now I have two Teslas left. I'm going to use these other two Teslas to try to stop some blimps from a certain side. Here is one tip as a builder that I think everybody should know. Um, and also, if you don't build and you attack, you should know this too. A lot of builders will try to place traps on the right side of a base. Um, and that is because players are right-handed. Um, now, some players do know this and do go from the opposite side of the base on purpose. But typically, and generally speaking, players will attack from the right side of the base more than the left side. So what does that mean? Um, also, putting the Archer Queen here makes it more... Um, sorry, what's the right word for that? More important of a side of the base to attack. So we're going to put these two Teslas. We're going to put one here. Wait, what's a good spot for that? We'll put it there, and we'll put it there. One thing I just noticed is you... No, nah, that's fine. Uh, we'll do the Teslas there. And that is to stop extra balloon pathing into that air defense. Uh, or... Okay, yeah, we're fine. Okay, one thing I like to say. If you are a Sarge player... You see these two sweepers. What angles can you approach from to miss them? You can approach from any of these side angles. So how do we stop that? We can use the NATO. Or we can control the balloon pathing and use seeking your minds. Which is what I planned for in this video. So if you notice, there is no defenses in this area right here. Making balloons either path into here or over here. What that means is I can place a double seeking air mine here. And any blimps that come from this angle will get double seeking air mined. Um, I'm actually going to move that there so that I can place that. That's not really going to affect much. Um, so we got our double seeking air mine there. And then we'll be able to put bombs in this preferred Sarge angle side to hopefully trap them. All right. So we have our two Sams down. Other places we can use Sams are Town Hall side, but also on this other side of the scatter comp. Um, I'm going to use probably the red bombs. I can either put them behind Town Hall, I can do a bait with them on the side of the base, or I can put them on Eagle side, or I can split them between the multis. For this base, I am going to put the air bombs behind the Town Hall, and there's a couple reasons for doing that. Um, I think that this base can be vulnerable to a Queen Charge from the Town Hall, Pushing into these multis with a free wall break here. Um, I'm actually going to favor this red bomb farm a little bit over to the side more to hopefully catch healers potentially. Um, or and then also you have that there for balloons if balloons are on the town hall. Um, you can also put a NATO here or close to the town hall. I'm sorry, kind of going on a tangent here, but all right, we're gonna put the red bombs there. You can move those to your to your needs as you have this base link. Uh, but we have two skelly traps. So what can we do with the skelly traps? We can put them... I like putting them in the rage comps personally around the air heroes. So we can either put them on this side or around here. I'll probably just put them in front of the scatters. Um, this will either make the king use an extra hit uh, to stop those because he has a splash. Or it'll slow down RC, which is important. RC gets a ton of value. <clears throat> They could be, because we have these Rico cannons here, they do protect. Hmm. We're actually going to put them with the, no. We're going to keep them in there. I was thinking about putting them next to the Infernos here. 
to stop against the RC a little bit, but we're gonna we're gonna keep them in front of the scatters is like a typical typical thing. We have these two Teslas here just to help stop a little bit of balloons. Um, I don't actually think that's a good spot for those, um, but we're gonna keep this Tesla here in case of uh, balloon yeah balloon pathing and uh, might catch someone by surprise if they do place a flame flinger up here. These are subject to change. I'll come back to those. All right, have these two Sams here. We're assuming his the Super Archer blimp player's blimp goes down right here. What can we do? We have spring traps and bombs. All right, so we'll do two small bombs, two giant bombs on each of these sides. So if they clone in, they will die to that. Um, and then we'll also put a few spring traps here. Um, in this little corner of the base, if anybody somehow gets their blimp here, clones over, um, they will die. The super archers will die to the spring traps. Other ways to use spring traps are to stop ice golems and headhunters and hog riders. A couple ands there, but those are kind of the main keys for that. Um, I'll put a spring trap here, um, and that can be either for an ice golem suey. Or if a headhunter paths. Headhunters can jump over walls, but they path around buildings in a weird ways. So the head if someone places a headhunter over here for the queen, it might actually path in between these two walls. Weirdly. They're, they have a little bit of a weird interaction. Um, but potentially there. Okay, we have three spring traps left. Where can we place them at? Hopefully. Alright. We're going to place most of the rest of the bombs in front of the eagle artillery. Uh, and I am going to favor the NATO into one side here. Uh, I think that NATO can be moved because it's mostly just for root rider spam. If you spam into the Grand Warden multi archer tower eagle, they get held here, and then you have the ice golems holding them, and then you have all this. They forced home. The rage comps can help kill them. So we got that going on. All right. We also just have the bombs there for hog riders, and we're going to take those out. We'll just leave those giant bombs there. We're going to put one giant bomb in front of each of these scatter comps here. Uh, and can I fit one right there? Yeah, that'll be fine like that. And that's either for hog riders or for side root riders, just to get a little bit more damage on them when they enter. Now we have two small bombs left. Uh, we'll just put those in between these two giant bombs here just for a little bit more damage. Small bombs are mostly used for stopping super archers, and that's about it. You can play them with giant bombs. They don't do a lot. Uh, there's a couple other techniques for them too, but generally, not a lot. Alright, what do we have left? We have a giant bomb and three spring traps. Where I can put these three spring traps, I'm going to try to place them in places people might super archer blimp. Now, rage comps are... Do have a problem with super archers you can land anywhere around here and get a ton of value um but we're going to put this giant bomb here in between these two key defenses um because defensive targeting things like hog riders root riders path between them giant bomb yay um then we have three spring traps so we'll just spring trap this other corner here i'm also going to double sam this side because we might see some blimps or some side queen entries there. Those Sams can double as both of those, which I kind of like having them on both sides there. Sometimes I do traps on one side of the base compared to the other. All right, four Sams left. We want to use them. We can trap this one side of the base, which I'll probably do. Um, but we're going to use, I guess, we'll use two Sams. Those are not in the best places because you can easily pull them. But they're better than nothing. So we're going to put them here. Uh, for general things such as blimp, heroes, healers, we'll put them there. Two eagle Sams. Now I have two other Sams. We're going to put them in our bottom scatter shot here. We'll put a seeking air mine here. And we'll actually favor the clan castle on this side. Uh, we'll put the one Sam here. As kind of another double Sam spot if someone tries to blimp right here. Uh, actually, I'm going to move those three spring traps to like right here. 
Well, that's kind of a weird spot for them. That's not gonna work. Okay, we'll put them here. Uh, yeah, this Sam here, multitude of different things, just, it's a good Sam to have for general purpose. Alright, this is the base showcase. Uh, we'll do a little bit of a photo mode, get ourselves a nice little screenshot of that. Alright, here's the base. Now, this is a typical box base. Actually, it's not typical, I did some weird things on it, but, um... It is a double rage box base, and you could have some success with it. Free link in the description, as you might have checked. Uh, but yeah, if you stuck around to the end of the video, thank you. Uh, I might include some replays here at the end if I use it in Legends League or in a war defense. We'll see. But most likely, we're going to end it here. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below or message me on Discord or at me on Twitter. Any of those work. Um, I hope to be posting some more videos for you guys soon. So, thank you. I hope you have a great night, guys. Afternoon, morning, whatever it is for you. Thanks for watching this. Have a great day, everybody.